Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and welcome back to another LEGO Harry Potter review. So today we're looking at probably the set that I'm least excited to look at in this wave, that being set number 76416, Quidditch Trunk. This set includes 599 pieces, retailing for the weird price of $67.99 when it released on June 1st of 2023. Now that price point, we've seen quite a few sets this wave that are, like, have a seven in the first two digits which is very concerning or even like a two or a one as the second digit which is just so weird to see i really hope that lego is reconsidering some of these prices just because th this set just does not feel worth 67 dollars. i mean 60 bucks i think that's fine as this has almost 600 pieces but still as far as all the sets that we've gotten in this current wave of lego harry potter sets there just really isn't anything too crazy about this i mean we've gotten quidditch stuff before it's nice to get something slightly different quidditch wise but still it's just not exactly what i'm looking for when it comes to lego giving us more Quidditch related Harry Potter sets. I guess one thing this set has going for it is the box art looks really amazing. It's a bit of a departure of what we've been seeing with some of the other sets. We don't have your characters off to the side, we just have more of a look at the trunk, customize your figures, three training games or like types of Quidditch games that you can play with this design, and just look at Hogwarts in the background and the stadiums. I really like their choice of the background. It looks really beautiful. From the back side, it looks like we're highlighting some of the different uh, games that you can play, which I'll hopefully be able to go into more detail what these are about. Hopefully they'll have some sort of explanation within the instructions. Push tabs as every other set in this wave has them. Let's open this up and see what's inside. Within the box, LEGO is still not as environmentally friendly as we want them to be. We have a total of seven plastic bags. You get two loose plate pieces in addition to your stickers and instruction manual, which are just loose within the box. Oh, we got a giant sticker sheet. Most of these, I guess, going on those flag pieces and just around the entire box design. Instructions, same style you'll be seeing for all the other sets. Wind guy from the back. Piece count for two pages. And the same advertisement for that Hogwarts layout. I also did want to highlight from the very front, just like the magical trunk that we got in March of last year, you can customize your minifigures. It just shows that you have these Quidditch robes, one for each house, and all these different head and hair options in which you can mix around with your figures. Now this set does include a number of parts to customize your Quidditch minifigures, but we're going to start by just taking a look at the regular old characters. First, obviously we got to get Harry Potter in his sort of year 5 through 6 appearance. Even though we don't get to see all of these characters play together since Prisoner of Azkaban, it is just kind of interesting to see that they chose that year 5 through 7 version of Harry to go along with a Cedric Diggory that may no longer be around. But anyways, the torso print for this character should be the exact same print that we saw back in 2018 for that Quidditch set. Front and back printing, though really the thing that I think is really cool about this character is the fact that we get a hood alongside the cape piece. Now the cape piece, I'm not much of a fan of these one whole capes that LEGO has been making lately. Hood piece is brand new in that color for the very first time, and as I said, this hood piece, which you'll see for all of these characters, are these one whole capes that they've started putting in like the 4 plus juniorized sets, and they're also starting to make their way in other sets, like I know Gandalf in the new Lord of the Rings direct -to consumer has this style of cape, which I'm not really a fan of. I mean, I just don't think they look very good. In this case, I think it's fine. I mean, as much as I don't like it, I've been told that it works very well alongside this hood piece just so that it doesn't mess up the regular old cape design. And I guess it's fine for what it is. It's just I'm not a fan of them using that design. I definitely prefer the other one just because it looks, it looks better. I just don't really like how this doesn't like wrap around as much as say this cape right here it's a lot more pointy and like triangular going down from the back side 
Speaking of Cedric Diggory, we actually got him before within a book. It is rather surprising that we got him first in his Quidditch uniform. That way, Hufflepuff Quidditch uniforms first appeared within the Diagon Alley Direct to Consumer set back in 2020. It's nice to see that they're finally putting it in a cheap enough set for other people other than that book, obviously. Torso design being different than the rest just because of the Hand coloring, we got the regular brown on the other versions, this one using the dark brown. Hood and cape are brand new for this particular set and work wonders. I'm really happy with how that turned out. If you're interested in the back printing, here's just a quick look on this figure. Same torso print, front and back. You also get that brand new Cedric Diggory facial expression for this year with a nice smirk from the front. And another smirk from the other side. Same hair piece we've been getting since 2019. Draco looks exceptionally well here as well. Torso piece just like Harry coming in that 2018 set. You also get that hood piece, which we actually have seen colored in dark green before on Green Arrow, which is really nice to see it return. Cape piece, same one whole design. And the facial expression is brand new for 2023. I love this face that they made for Draco. It works very, very well. Still have to complain that the hairpiece is yellow and not tan, though. Get a worried face from the backside. And lastly, Cho Chang is yet another character who we have actually seen appear within her Quidditch uniform within this year's polybag, though this one being less accurate. Using her regular hairpiece, which is nice, but here we actually get that brand new hood piece and the cape. Again, brand new recolors for this set. Torso print will be the same exact one we saw within the Diagon Alley set, it's just that now we're getting those dark brown hands instead of the brown hands that you saw on the last two torso pieces. Also take a look at the back printing. And another thing that I have to say across the board is that I am a little annoyed that they don't all have white legs because I think that's a lot better than the tan. Facial expression is the same one that was introduced for this year, 2023, which also works very well with a different flesh tone. That warm tan, you get a smile from the front. And from the back side, a sad look for Cho Chang. And you also get a different hairpiece than the one that we're typically used to seeing. That ponytail hairpiece, I think, is very nice for her character. Alongside those core four faces that we saw for our minifigures, you also get 10 extra heads that you can just switch out with those Quidditch robes to make different characters. You also get a number of hair pieces, which we'll look at momentarily. All of these heads have appeared in other sets in the past. Pretty much all of them also appear within that foosball table set, which we saw last year. All of which are double sided, which is also really, really cool. And most of these only come in like two to three other sets. Now just talking about these individually, we just looked at these three, though we have our one girl facial expression for the light nougat, which is the Jen or so facial expression from 2016. We know and love that one. Reused a lot on just so many other minifigures. We have our medium brown heads, the girl facial expression appearing in a Black Panther set, as well as the foosball table, this boy facial expression only coming in the foosball table till now. The medium nougat right underneath it, we have the boy facial expression which came in one of the eternal sets as well as two others, and the girl facial expression may be recognizable from Marvel's MJ from the Spider-Man film, so that's pretty nice to see that come in this set. We have the nougat faces at the very top here, the boy head only coming within a 2020 Jurassic World set, and the girl facial expression coming in the foosball table. Underneath that, we have the reddish brown faces, boy coming in some of the 2021 Jurassic World sets, as well as the 2022 Hogwarts Express direct-to-consumer, and the girl coming mostly in 2020 LEGO Star war sets. And lastly, moving on to the warm tan, we have our Cho Chang facial expression at the bottom, and at the top we have another face that you may have seen within that foosball table. Dumping out all the hair pieces, we have some interesting ones in here. Of course, we just looked at these on our core minifigures, but we happen to get 10 extras to go along with those 10 extra heads. 
Now we're going to bring Draco right back to be our demo for these wonderful hair pieces. Starting off with the one that I'm most excited about. We have the boy band hair piece which came first within the BTS set in March. So it's nice to see that appear here. You'll also be able to find it in two of the summer Lego friend sets. Really nice hair piece, happy to have it in my collection. Certainly something that I think would be interesting to see recolored for Draco even. I think it would be really funny to see this used for like a Prisoner of Azkaban Draco. Just saying. Next up we have this funny recolor of the Zayn hair piece in orange, which you may have been able to get within the foosball table as of last year. Interesting hair, though doesn't cover up the full back side, which is a little annoying when you have all double-sided facial expressions. And lastly, another that I have to highlight is the spiky hair piece in dark brown, which isn't too common coming within the light year sets as of last year, so it's great to see it return here. Love, love, love this hair piece in this color. Just wonderful to get it. As for the others, nothing really too special. You get some of these, which you've seen in collectible minifigures. The Finn hair piece. This hair piece came previously on one of those DC superhero minifigures in the CMF. You get the Nia hair piece. This one may look familiar. We've seen this in a Jurassic World set as well as the last trunk. And a nice shortcut hair piece for your Weasley minifigure if you want to make a Weasley in this set. Very last thing I have to talk about as far as hair piece inclusions, we have that hair piece that we saw for Cho Chang and this facial expression making Angelina Johnson. So happy that I can do that here just so that I don't have to reuse all the parts that we got within that one banner set that we saw earlier this year. We'll for sure keep this figure in this design. So here is everything that you get within this set. I laid out all the minifigure parts. I did take some liberties and create some characters myself. Though the trunk is really just very, very small for this $68 price point. Yes, it does look a lot cleaner and nicer, I think, than the last magical trunk. It is about the same size, and as far as functionality, it's pretty much the same. Though, as you'll hear me say a few times, this is definitely something that feels targeted to that younger audience. So first things first, we're gonna take a look at the trunk design. Here's everything all put together with the trunk from the back side. You get all of these different clip piece connections to attach the extra accessories because they don't actually fit inside. I'm going to start by removing this part. And you can remove these two sections. You get one of those really nice translucent stick pieces with the studs so you can have your characters fly around by hand. You get this thing which we'll talk more about when it comes to the games. Same thing goes with this. Though these you should all recognize we have the three hoops which are the goal posts in a Quidditch match, which we'll put up within the trunk in just a minute. Now with all that stuff removed, you can see the back side with all the clip pieces. We have the little handles, which are actually pretty strong. Those are some Technic connections, very similar to the last one, it's very sturdy. The top side features these 4x8 inverted tile pieces for the very first time in dark red, all of which featuring stickers. You can see your little house icons on there as well. I think that looks really nice. And also just the front details of this. There are a lot of stickers in this set which I don't really like, though the outcome I think is worth it. You get your house icons again from the front. You get this printed one by one for the lock, which we have seen before in other sets. And it is really interesting to see that they went this route instead of giving us the lock and key, which we saw with the last set, the magical trunk back in March of last year. Here's just a quick comparison of these two. I definitely like that they added the horseshoe pieces from the very top to round out the top of this one compared to what they did here. And just a quick look at these designs they're about the same size and this one i think may be more expensive it might be like eight dollars more than this one this one i think was capped at that sixty dollar price point though it was cheaper before the price increases which is interesting to think about this one featuring that hole in which you can unlock it with a lock and key 
jiggle it around, and you'll unlock all of this stuff, which I think makes this set feel much, much more worth it than this one. Additionally, you get more hair pieces to customize your minifigures. You also get all of these stickers that you can place on the outside of the trunk, which is a lot more customization than you get there. Again, just as far as like the interior featuring all of those things. And even so, you get a number of extra pieces in that set, which I still have bagged up a lot of these pieces that you can just change out the colors to your house and all these different minifigure parts. It's just, this set I think is definitely a better deal than what you're getting for the Quidditch set. So if you're picking one of these, I definitely recommend this one. Though this one still has a lot of strengths as far as the minifigure selection, including a lot more older facial expressions instead of the younger kid faces that you'll see within that other set. And this one also features more of like a game aspect, which, you know, I definitely prefer that over the customization because I did not want to mess up this design with any of those stickers. I definitely think it looks better without a lot of them. I did place the platform nine and three quarters because that's, I guess, enough as far as what I think looks nice design wise. But in order to open this up, you won't find any lock and key. You just got to open it up nice and easily. You get those ball joint connections which work with these clip pieces for a nice sturdy close. Now inside here you can remove the back wall of the trunk and you can lift up these flag pieces and I also did include the little trunk sitting there on the studded area. Now the back wall features a lot of the accessories for this set. We have the Quidditch cup, which is unprinted, just a regular old trophy piece there in gold, which is nice. You get some broomsticks for your minifigures using the same old design that we know and love from 2001. It is really interesting to see that they updated the design as of two years ago, and we have not gotten those in sets in a long time, or at least since the Disney minifigure series this year, we saw it return with Sorcerer Mickey, but even so, it's just really interesting. Get your beater bats up here. Again, all clip piece connections with those serving hand pieces. And you get those serving hand pieces yet again from the back when you store all those other extra accessories which we're gonna place in there momentarily. One other thing I have to comment on when it comes to this design is the fact that these shield tile pieces all feature stickers and not prints. I am really wondering why LEGO has yet to make prints in this style for these houses. I mean, I know we got them on 2x2 two two tile pieces way back when. I'm not sure if those are still in production or not, but I think that it would make sense for LEGO to make these all printed just because it feels like something that would be useful in the future. Before we set up and put any of those other pieces into the playing board, we have our Quidditch pitch, which the color scheme as a whole is all right. It's small for a Quidditch pitch. I don't really mind. You get stickers from both sides of these flag pieces there. One for each house, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. You get some clip pieces over here, which again is just so then you can close up the trunk with these ball joints from the back. You may notice that we have those Technic connections for the two side handles going through the entire board. I think this is a really clever building technique as right here in the middle, you get this exposed Technic axle hole, which works with this really nice transclear piece. In order to give your minifigure a spot to actually be in midair in front of the goalposts and swing side by side to protect them. Now, where are our goalposts? Let's place them right into the game. Get the clip piece connection right here. And both of these just have those bar pieces, which you can float right down here. One other thing I have to talk about when it comes to these rounded goalpost pieces is the fact that they are brand new recolors for this set. I would like to see them reuse them again if they ever decide to make a proper Quidditch pitch design. Now we're on to the part of the video where it's time to talk about the different games that are included. We're gonna remove our two beaters bats since we're gonna start with that game. Give one to our 
Ravenclaw player over here, and we're going to end up using this accessory. Now, if you're not familiar with what this accessory is, it's a dish launcher or a 2x2 two two circular tile launcher. You get them in these different colors. Golden color to represent the golden snitch. The red to represent the quaffle. And finally, the dark gray to represent the bludger. I should also add that you get all of those balls within this flat-headed trunk piece. When you open it up, you get two of those gunmetal gray studs to represent the bludgers, your golden snitch, and then we have this dark red ball piece, which is a brand new recolor for the quaffle. In this case, we have the bludgers, which we're just gonna place in the middle there. You get that studded area to place your minifigure. We're gonna put Angelina Johnson. Now how this game works is that you have your character playing over here, blocking side by side, and Angelina wants to get the bludger past him or he's going to have to hit it with his bat, which I don't think is going to be very easy. So we're going to launch this out, you just got to press down, and we just hit him in the face. Let's try that one more time. Almost hit the hole in the back of my table there, but you get the idea. You have one person controlling the player over here, and another person trying to get the ball past them. When setting up for this next section, we can put the goalposts back, and this time we'll be using the dark red 2x2 two two circular tiles to represent the waffle. And we're going to try and get them past the goalposts here with our character blocking them back and forth. And the goal is to try and get one through the hoop. Which I missed. No worries, you get an extra. Yay, I did one. Now for this last game, we remove that center trans clear piece. And we can also take down the goal posts. And while we're at it, we gotta remove at least one of these pole pieces because we're gonna need it. Put on the bottom of this funny contraption, which I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to work. It's just how they show it within the instructions. And we can plop our seeker down over here. And in this case, just like the other ones, we get those golden circular tile pieces in order to plop in here. And we're supposed to try and shoot the guy with them. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. I know that they do show just this range of motion back here within the instructions, which is just, again, just kind of really confusing to me. I don't know why he's placed here or not in the middle or not over there. It's just, it's just very, very weird. But here again, you can shoot the two by two circular tile. And I missed him. Oh, well. At the end of it all, I think the objective is really just to try and shoot these two by two circular tiles through the hoops if they're there or to try and shoot them at the other players after that with an end objective to just win the quidditch cup so overall for 68 dollars is this set worth it well it's about the same size as the last magical trunk set i definitely like that there's a lot more older facial expressions not like they don't look like kids like they do within the magical trunk set that is something that i definitely appreciate as far as customizing figures it's just not something that i'm into i mean it's nice getting all of these different flash tone colors and stuff it's just not something that i'm looking for right now within a quidditch set i'm more so looking for them to include seven of each of these torso pieces for the minifigures. I don't even care if they don't give me legs, I can buy those on my own. I just want to build up those Quidditch teams and that's really the big thing that I want out of a set like this. And also just as far as the build goes, I think the 2018 Quidditch set is the best thing that we've ever gotten. I really would love to see them go back and do something similar to that because that's really what I'm wanting out of a Quidditch set. Not not this. I definitely think kids are going to love this set. People who like collecting minifigure parts will for sure like this, though if you have the foosball table already, I mean, you don't really need a lot of these facial expressions. They're going to be repeats. And if you're a fan of Quidditch, I definitely recommend waiting because we could definitely do better than this. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye.